I want to start today by listing some proposals to combat climate change. For example, a tax on people who fly more frequently, educating people to eat less red meat and dairy, or perhaps even a ban on SUVs. Now, who do you think would propose ideas like this? I mean, presumably someone kind of climate obsessed, for example. Extinction Rebellion. Or maybe. Greenpeace. Or perhaps even. Climate Adam. But that actual answer is the British public. To be more precise, the UK's first ever citizens climate assembly. I mean, actually, you probably already guessed that if you read the title or saw the thumbnail for this video. This is a group which was set up by British parliamentary committees to help guide progress towards net zero emissions. Now, what makes the assembly so powerful is who makes it up, which is everyone. The assembly is designed to be representative of the country as a whole in terms of things like age, education and gender. People are just chosen at random with a letter, kind of like a Willy Wonka golden ticket, except a lot more boring. Oh. But, and now here's the crucial thing, the assembly is not filled with climate obsessed people who talk and read and act on climate change all the time in their everyday lives. In other words, it's not filled with people like me. The assembly is also designed to be representative of the UK in terms of concern about climate change. And this is what makes their conclusions so striking. These are just regular people who are given climate education by experts. And through that, they came to the conclusion that in all the UK's future actions, education and fairness should be at the heart of our climate policy. Okay, so great, these are their recommendations. Everything from encouraging people to eat less red meat to banning highly polluting vehicles. But they're not laws though. Well, no. So what's the point? Well, well the point is that in order to stop climate change, we need to get to zero emissions overall, both globally and in the UK specifically. That's gonna require some pretty dramatic changes. And as we've seen with the coronavirus, dramatic changes can be hugely divisive. Having these recommendations from the Climate Assembly could help the government bring in ideas that would otherwise be pretty unpopular. That way, if the British public say, who said you could tax flying? Well, then the UK government can say, I think you'll find that that was you, the British public. As proof of how big a difference citizens' assemblies can make on controversial issues, a citizens' assembly was key in overturning Ireland's long-standing ban on abortion. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger and controversialer than that. It's worth pointing out that some environmentalists aren't thrilled with all their assembly's recommendations. For example, not recommending moving the date earlier for reaching net zero, or not being too keen on nuclear power. Okay, so what happens next? Will the Assembly's recommendations become laws? Will they make it easier for the UK to reach net zero? Well, honestly, it's hard to tell. But one thing's for sure, which is that this is an amazing starting point for the journey that the UK can and should go on to fight climate change. And now for some genuine questions for the Climate Adam Climate Assembly, which are, what do you think of these recommendations? Do you think they go far enough? Or do you think they go so far they could alienate some members of the British public? And what do you think of the idea of having a Climate Citizens Assembly in the first place? Genuinely, I would love to know your answers, so make sure you leave them in the comments below. And I just wanted to point out that I'm inching ever closer to 10,000 subscribers. It would be incredible to end the terrible year that is 2020 with an audience this big. So if you're new here, do make sure you subscribe. And if you're old here, do make sure you share this video so that even more people can see it. Okay, until next time. Bye.